Let's talk about the future of Anthony Richardson and the Indianapolis Colts because the sky could be the limit with this team. The thing is, you are in a tough division with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Houston Texans, and possibly the Tennessee Titans as well. But I want to start off with Anthony Richardson because he's the wild card with this team. Over the last couple of years, his organization has been held back by lackluster quarterback play and just head coaching problems as well. Now, Frank Reich never really did get a fair shake with this team to some people because they basically had a revolving door at the quarterback position. Ever since Andrew Luck retired, you've had some weird quarterbacks. You've had Jacoby Brissett, Carson Wentz, Phillip Rivers, not in that order, but you've had a lot of different quarterbacks with this team. And Sam Elger also came in and played some snaps as well. But you selected Anthony Richardson in the first round and you hired Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen has proven that he can go out there and he can be a top offensive play caller in the NFL. He did that with the Philadelphia Eagles. And that was part of the reason to why he got this job with the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson in four games this season. He looked really good. Three passing touchdowns to one interception for 577 passing yards as well. He also had four rushing touchdowns with 136 rushing yards. The thing is with Anthony Richardson, he has to stay healthy. We all know that he has all world potential. Will he be able to hit that potential? We will see. But this is one of the best situations that a young quarterback can be in because of the weapons around him. I look at Anthony Richardson, the game that he had against the Los Angeles Rams. He looked really good in that game. Did he miss some key passes? Yes. But the next play, he'll come out and he'll make a freakishly athletic play because of the size that he has. The thing is with him from the other quarterbacks in this draft class, such, such as CJ Stroud and Bryce Young and Will Levis, he did not play as many games as those guys coming out of college. So a lot of people thought that he'll be raw coming in at that position and he should have sat down but the Indianapolis Colts they threw this kid into the fire a lot of it is because of the situation that he's in the offensive structure is already one of the best offensive structures in the NFL just because the play calling standpoint and the players around him with the veterans and Michael Pittman Jr then you have Jonathan Taylor the running back position as well I'll get more to the skill position players in just a second but when you look at Anthony Richardson he's gonna have to go out there take care of the football and most importantly take care of himself we know that this kid can go out there and ball look at the game that he had against the Los Angeles Rams. They lost that game 29 to 23. He was 11 to 25 in that game for 200 passing yards. He had two passing touchdowns to zero interceptions. And the reason why I bring this game up, Aaron Donald was in his face for the majority of the game. He would miss some throws. Other throws would just go out there on the run, throw it straight on the money. You can't teach those things. Those are certain intangibles that you look for in a top quarterback in the NFL. And the reason why I have a lot of faith in him moving forward is because of the play calling by Shane Stockton. He was a phenomenal play caller with the Los Angeles Chargers. He helped develop Justin Herbert. He also helped develop Jalen Hurts as well. Jalen Hurts has never been looked at as a top passing quarterback in the NFL. But yet in that system with Shane Stockton, he looked very good. He looked like a top quarterback. With the weapons that they have around Anthony Richardson, there's no reason to why this kid cannot be a top quarterback in the NFL, let alone in this division. And even though this division, they have a lot of talented quarterbacks such as CJ Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, and Will Levis, you could talk about this kid having the highest ceiling because of the other things that he brings to the table besides just being a passing quarterback because the ability that he has to go out there and run an open field and break certain tackles and I would like to see him slide down in a couple of situations go run out of bounds you have to truck through everyone like it is college because this is a different game in the NFL but if he can stay healthy this kid could be a top quarterback in the NFL and when I speak of the pieces around him they did lose Zach Moss for the first couple of weeks of the season Zach Moss looked phenomenal and Zach Moss was a very good running back with this team but Jonathan Taylor when he was fully healthy he showed that he is still a top running back in the NFL 741 rushing yards in the season seven rushing touchdowns you also have Trey Sermon as well I believe that any running back with this team would be able to go out there and give you decent production Jonathan Taylor is one of the better running backs in the NFL the reason why I believe that is because of how good this offensive line is with guys like Quentin Nelson Braden Smith at the tackle position and Ryan Kelly at the center position as well this is a top offensive line in the NFL when they're fully healthy and when these guys are fully on go when these guys are fully going out there and they're playing at their best, they're one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And you have put this kid into a situation, top offensive line, top receiving weapons, and a top run game as well. Because you look at Michael Pittman Jr. Michael Pittman Jr. has been a consistent wide receiver with this team over the last couple of years by catching footballs from guys like Phillip Rivers, Jacoby Brissett, 
and also Carson Wentz as well. And he's always went out there and he gave you good production. On this season, he had 1,152 receiving yards on the season and four receiving touchdowns. And he did that majority playing with Gardner Minshew. Because Anthony Richardson missed time this season. And two of the games he was knocked out early in against the Houston Texans. He hit the back of his head. He was out with that game with a concussion. That second game against the Tennessee Titans, the first game they played against the Tennessee Titans, he hurt his shoulder and he was done for the season. Gardner Minshew came in. And Gardner Minshew is not a top quarterback to have in the NFL, but he's a top backup quarterback. This team almost made the NFL playoffs with Gardner Minshew, shouldering majority of the load. It came down to the running back dropping the pass at the backfield. It could have been a better ball by Gardner Minshew, but you were just a couple plays away from potentially going out there and beating the Houston Texans and making the NFL playoffs with Gardner Minshew. That is crazy to think about with a first-year head coach and Shane Steichen. And you have more weapons on this offense than Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman Jr. You also have Josh Downs as well, who was a very good wide receiver with this team this season. He has 771 receiving yards on season, two receiving touchdowns. And you also have Alec Pierce as well. Alec Pierce is a very solid wide receiver to have around. He hasn't been that top wide receiving option that they've been looking for, but he hasn't been put in the best situation either. He had 514 receiving yards on the season, two receiving touchdowns, and that's only on 32 catches. If you bump those catches up, he can easily get you 600 to 700 yards in the season with the speed that he has. He just has to be more consistent on the field. But this offense... It's very good. This is one of the better young offenses in the NFL, especially with Shane Stockton going out there and carrying the load and calling the plays with this team. Now, this team defensively, they can get after the quarterback, but I'm worried about their secondary. But let's start off with the positives first. They did go out there and they did cut Shaq Leonard. He went to the Philadelphia Eagles. He wasn't the same linebacker. The thing is with Shaq Leonard, they paid him a lot of money. The back injuries did that kid in. He was not able to go out there and sack the quarterback anymore. He was not going, he was not able to go out there and get the forced fumbles either. You have another linebacker on this team that is just a tackle machine that not too many people talk about. And that's Zaire Franklin. Zaire Franklin had 107 solo tackles on the season. That was the second most in the NFL and two forced fumbles. He's not going to go out there and be known to be a coverage linebacker, but he can go out there and tackle. And we saw it numerous times this season. He would stop the running back from getting a third and one, from getting a third and two. And that automatically puts the offense into a dangerous situation. Either you can go for it or you have to punt the football. And more times than not, you're going against this run-stopping defense, you have to punt the football because they're secondary. It needs help. But when you look at Quiddy Pay, a very good defensive lineman with this team. In his second season, eight and a half sacks, two forced fumbles. And the reason why he is able to go out there and feast on quarterbacks are because of guys like DeForest Buckner. DeForest Buckner is just eating up double teams and stopping the run. Eight sacks on the season, two forced fumbles. And you also have Samson Ebuquam as well. Nine and a half sacks, three forced fumbles. So you have some guys that can go out there and get to the quarterback. Grover Stewart missed some time this season due to a suspension, but Grover Stewart is a very good defensive tackle to have as well. He's not going to go out there and sack the the quarterback as much as the Forrest Buckner but he's going to be able to go out there stop the run put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and open up things for other guys across the defensive line as well and those linebackers so as long as that front seven is healthy this is going to be a very solid defense moving forward and I spoke to their defense needing some help they need to draft a cornerback in the first or second round they need cornerback help and it's not me saying that the cornerbacks of this team they're no good Kenny Moore is solid. Three interceptions on the season, but he did let up three touchdowns as well for 578 receiving yards. Not terrible because they're worst corners that you can name in the NFL, but he's not a true number one corner. Juju Brents is a very interesting corner. Only played nine games this season, and he looked very good down the stretch. The thing is, can he stay healthy? And when you look at him on the field, he doesn't scream number one corner, but at the same time, you don't really know if these guys can be that. Because they have been able to stay healthy in that secondary. If Juju Brents can stay healthy for an entire season playing behind this defensive line, he could possibly be a top corner in the NFL. Not saying that he'll ever be a top five to top ten corner, but he could be a top cornerback with this team. He allowed 411 receiving yards in the season. He had five pass breakups. He did let up two touchdowns, but he had a beautiful interception as well. And their sec and their safeties, they could use some help as well. But I do like Julian Blackman with this team. Julian Blackman had a solid season: four interceptions, eight pass deflections, sixty-five solo tackles. I think that he could be a very good safety moving forward with this team as well. And he's twenty-six years old. But they can possibly go out there and target the number one 
cornerback in the first round with how deep that this cornerback class is. I can see a guy like Quinnia Mitchell being the perfect cornerback with this team. They need speed in the secondary and they need more athleticism as well. But I like the young pieces that they have. It's not me saying that their secondary is no good that's completely terrible because there's some talent there. Kenny Moore is a talented corner. Juju Brents, they're talent, he's a talented corner. I'm not saying move off of those guys, but bringing in another cornerback would definitely help out this team in the long term. I like the future of this team. I love Anthony Richardson's potential. But that's all I can say right now. It's the potential. That's it. We don't know if this kid can possibly go out there and be a top quarterback. Some people compare him to Cam Newton. I compare him to himself. I think that Anthony Richardson would be the first Anthony Richardson. We haven't seen a quarterback like this before with the body that he has and the arm that he has. Because I believe that he could be more accurate than Cam Newton at times. We saw some of that this season as well. It just comes down to his health and the play calling of Shane Steichen and the pieces around him. You could worry about Jonathan Taylor being healthy in the future, but like I mentioned before, you could put some running backs behind this offensive line. I believe that they can give you very good production. Look at what the running backs did against the Steelers this season with this team. They blew the Steelers out. And their running backs were decimated in that game. They went out there, they ran the football very well, and Gardner Minshew showed the load. You do have Joe Flacco with this team now because Gardner Minshew is now with the Las Vegas Raiders. Joe Flacco showed on the back half of this season with the Cleveland Browns that he could be a top backup quarterback in the NFL. Now, I'm not saying that you want him to go out there and carry the load like how Gardner Minshew did, but he's a solid option to have around. He's made some deep playoff runs before. He's a Super Bowl MVP. He's going to go out there and he's going to help out Anthony Richardson at the next level. That's why I do believe in. So continue to put veterans in that room. He's just a good insurance policy to have around. But at the end of the day, the future is lying on the shoulders of Shane Steichen and also Anthony Richardson as well. But let me know in the, in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the Indianapolis Colts and are they a real threat in this division? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last, Wayne guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.